All right, this video we're going to talk about a very important concept, which is the concept of path independence when it comes to line integrals. So we already talked about how we can essentially just represent a line integral of this form by the following equation. So let's say we have some vector field uh, and some vector of position. We can represent this as some point going from A to B and then essentially we have the gradient of a scalar function which is a potential function of that vector field dot product with dr and then basically this gives us the the function evaluated at those points but perhaps an even more remarkable result and uh, basically just a consequence of the fundamental theorem of line integrals is that you can virtually take any path between the points a and b and you will always get the same result for that line integral and that's a really really important concept so how does it actually work where essentially we need we are claiming that uh, the line integral taken over path c1 from a to b is exactly the same as path from uh, as the path taken on c2 now this is only true if the vector field f is conservative and there exists a function <coughs> a function f such that its gradient is equal to the vector field f. Now, suppose that we are evaluating the line integral, and now we're going to do the, perform the following substitution. So by definition, the vector of position r is always defined as a function of x, y, and t, but each of x, y, and z, sorry, but each of them is in turn a function of a parameter t. So it follows that if we were to differentiate both sides, that basically just taking infinitesimal quantities, we would get the element dr expressed in terms of dx, dy, and dz. So we can always write the expression, the line integral for a vector field in the following form. We just take the dot product of the components, and then it gives us the following line integral, which is something that we have found before as well, and we know how to solve. Now... The claim of path independence is that if we can find a scalar function or just a scalar or just a potential function of f that satisfies this relation right here, then we can evaluate the line integral by simply taking that the value of that function f at the ends at the endpoints a and b. So basically we just take this difference and that will give us the value of the line integral regardless of what path we're taking. So how does that actually work? I, I believe this is better explained through an example, and, it, and it's such an amazing result, but of course it only works if f is conservative. So let's have a look at a, a simple example. Suppose we have the following, we want to find the line integral f dr for the following function. We're going to have the function 2x times dx plus so dx, 2y times dy plus 4z times dz. And we're going to evaluate the line integral from the point a, 0, 0, 0. So basically just the origin to the point b, which is going to be 2, 2, 2. Okay, so notice that we have not been given a path R, so we don't actually know what the curve C is, but we know that according to path independence, if this vector field is conservative and we can find a potential function F that, we, that allows us to evaluate it using this, we don't actually need to define a path for that. So let's see what we have. Well, we can write this in terms of the vector field. So each of these components is going to correspond to the elements of the vector field. So we have 2x, 2y, and then 4z. All right. And now the next thing is to, of course, show that this vector field is conservative. So in order to do that, we need to prove that the curl of that vector field is equal to zero. So once again, we're going to have i, j, and k. So x, y, and z here. And then we have 2x, 2y, and 4z. So basically, this is going to give us the following. We're going to have i, so that's going to be the, the x component of this new vector field. We're going to have the derivative of this with respect to y. Well, that's just 0, minus the derivative of this with respect to z, 0, minus j. And now here we have 
derivative of this with respect to x, that's 0, minus derivative of this with respect to z, that's 0. And then the last component is going to be derivative of this function with respect to x, that's 0, and then minus that times zero. So everything is 0, which proves that this vector field f is indeed conservative. And we know that if the vector field is conservative, that immediately implies that we can always find a function that satisfies the following relation. So in this case, all we need to do is to set the gradient of that scalar function equal to f. And we know that this is just going to be written as false. So we have partial derivative here, f respect to y, then f with respect to z. And this is going to be equal to the vector field, so 2x, 2y, and 4z. So now in order to find what that function f is, all we need to do is perform some integration. So we start off with this one. We write partial of f with respect to x equals to 2x. Integrate with respect to x. So this is going to give us x, y, and z. It's going to be equal to x squared plus some function g of y and z. Now we differentiate this result with respect to y. So this is going to be partial of f with respect to y is going to be equal to, this becomes 0, this becomes partial of g with respect to y. And this in turn should actually be equal to the second one, which is going to be 2y. Now we integrate both sides with respect to y, so this is going to give us the following. This becomes y squared plus some function of z. Now we add this to the original function, so basically now our f of x, y, and z becomes the following. So we're going to have x squared plus y squared plus h of z. And finally, we're going to differentiate this expression with respect to z to get the final function. So this is going to be h prime of z. And this should be equal to this component here, which is 4z. Now integrate both sides with respect to z. This is going to give us h of z equals to 2z squared plus some numerical constant k. So now putting everything together, we arrive at the following potential function, which is going to be x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared plus some numerical constant k. And now in order to evaluate this line integral here, all we need to do is plug these two values into the function. So in this case, we're going to have line integral is going to be equal to f evaluated at the point 2, 2, 2, minus the function evaluated at the point 0, 0, 0, because remember we're going from a to b. And let's see what the values here are. So we're going to have, for this one, we're going to put in, so we have 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 2, 2 squared plus k. Minus 0 times 0 times 0 and then everything else is 0 except for k <clears throat> Now here we're gonna have 4 plus 4 that's 8 plus 2 times 4 that's 8 so that's 16 And then we have k minus k this they cancel out So this is the value of that line integral and see how we just found the value of that line integral without actually specifying any path C. So I, th I believe this is a really, really amazing concept. I mean, just because F is conservative, we're able to do this directly without actually specifying any path of integration. So this is a really remarkable result that can come in quite handy in uh, physics and engineering and some applications of line integrals. So hopefully this has helped you understand a little bit more about what's happening when you have a, a line integral of a vector field and also what the implications are for when the vector field itself is conservative and then you can find a potential function for it in order to apply the fundamental theorem of line integrals to evaluate it rather simply.